All right, so now um, we're going to get into uh, section 7.5. Um, Uh, which basically is applications of uh, rational expressions. The uh, last few uh, sections were just uh, introducing you to uh, rational expressions. Now we're going to start applying some of the stuff we've uh, hopefully learned. Um, pointer options. Okay, um, let's see here. <clears throat> Just a moment. Pause this thing. All right, and these problems are usually take a while to uh, just write them down. It takes a pretty good amount of time, so uh, I'm going to have to do that first. <laughs> Let's see here, pointer options. So this is example one in your uh, text. Uh, In physics, the focal length f of a lens is given by the formula So in this formula, P is the distance from the ob object. Uh, to the lens. And Q is the distance from the lens to the image. And you're asked to find Q if P equals 20 centimeters and F equals 10 centimeters. And actually, uh, without even knowing what any of these terms mean, really, um, you can do this pretty uh, easily by just kind of substituting values in, but uh, I'll go ahead and draw a picture for you of what this actually is talking about. Um, so in the diagram of the text, we have a little sad apple. Uh, And we have this lens. And this is the center of the lens.
then let's see here. So that was basically distance from the object to the lens. In this case, the object is Apple. And the image is basically going to be uh, reflected. Uh, and I'll choose a different color. Like, yeah, it's not terribly important, uh, at least not for our purposes, um, the image, uh, but just to give you an idea, and they have it on film, basically, so it's being projected on this uh, film, basically. So this is the inside of a camera, and you have old school film inside of the camera, and Basically, that's what's happening here. So this is where your image is. So and this is basically inside of a camera. I'm not going to draw the rest of the camera, but you get the idea. So basically, this is Q. So basically, um, really, I guess all of this drawing wasn't even really necessary for the problem we're doing, but uh, it gives you an idea. Uh, it gives you an idea of what they're actually talking about. So uh, basically, uh, really, um, you solve this in probably 30 seconds. Um, uh, we have 1 over f. So basically, we have 1 over f equals uh, 1 over p plus 1 over q. There's a few different ways. Let's look at what we're actually saw asked to solve for. We want to find Q. So this is what we're interested in, and we're given this, and we're given this. Okay. And what we can do is I probably should have. Uh, yeah, it may work. It may work. Okay, so basically, what we want to do this uh, f. Wait a minute, p and q. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, we're given p is twenty centimeters, and we're given that f is ten centimeters. We could rearrange this thing and solve for q or in terms of F and P, or we can just plug them in directly. We'll go ahead and do the latter, which is basically we just end up with 1 over 10 equals 1 over 20 plus 1 over Q. So I end up with, if I subtract, so I just multiply everything by 10, or multiply everything by 20, and I end up with 2 equals 1 plus 20 over Q. And I multiply everything by Q to get rid of the Q. So I basically have, uh, actually, before I even do that, uh, I can combine my like terms and I'll have 2 minus 1, that's going to be 1 equals 20 over Q, right? So now what I can do is I can basically say, okay. Multiply both sides by Q, so I'm going to get Q equals 20. So it, that means that basically the distance from the lens to the image, which was, uh, so basically this distance from the lens to the image is 20 centimeters. And that's all there is to that one. You know, these word problems, you know, they're especially the setup of them gets kind of long and drawn out basically for not a lot of work. And sometimes when they don't have a lot of setup, <laughs> that's the ones you have to worry about because uh, those are usually the one that takes the most uh, thought. Um, so we can take this uh, same equation and actually, so let's just say we have the same equation. 
and we had one over L. Let's just say I want to solve that for P. Then if I wanted to do that, then the first thing I want to do is get rid of all these dang fractions everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, I can multiply by F, P, and Q everywhere. So basically what I'm going to end up with is PQ equals P is going to cancel. In. So I'm going to multiply everything by multiplying everything by FPQ. So basically I end up with PQ uh, 1 over P is going to give me let's see here uh, FQ and I multiply the last thing the only thing is the Q should fall out and I should be left with FP. All right. So what I'm solving for I'm solving for P so I got P here I got P here, so let me get them all on one side, and I have P, Q, minus FP equals FQ. So now, I can factor out a P, and I get Q minus F, uh, and that's equal to FQ. So now, I can just divide both sides by what I'm trying to get rid of. Same as always, we're trying to isolate Q, or excuse me, we're trying to isolate P, so we want to get everything off of it. So Q minus F, so basically that means that P equals F Q over Q minus F. So that's what we end up with. Pretty straightforward, and we really we could have done the same thing with Q. Um, basically, our in in this case, our P and Q would have just ended up swapping places, and we could have just substituted our values in from there, which is pretty straightforward. Um, so we'll try example three. So I want to solve for n in this equation. <clears throat> so basically, you got to spot where your n is. I got an n here. I got an n here. All right. First thing I want to do again is go get rid of my fraction and let me correct something. Uh, r, little r, and big R are two different values, uh, which is usually going to be the case. Corner uh, options. Uh, So that's a little r. So that's a oh wait yeah, n e over r plus n little r. Okay. So basically, I want to solve for n. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply everything by the denominator. So I end up with i times r plus n r, and that is equal to this, which is n e because the this is going to cancel on the right hand side so basically what I'm going to end up with is um, I remember I'm solving for n okay so I want to expand and then try to get all my n's together so that I can factor them factor something out so I r plus I n r equals n e and I still got my n there so that needs to come over. So I'm going to have I R plus no, that's equals uh, pointer option. Uh, yeah, 
this. So that's going to be subtract this from both sides, uh, this term. So basically what I'm going to end up with is NE minus INR. And that's going to be which means that n equals dividing both sides by this I'm going to end up with uh, n equals ir over e minus ir and again I think I changed my case so let me <laughs> keep doing that let me see corner options eraser erase that erase this and this and this yeah those are should be lowercase uh, yeah that should be in, uh, did a lot of different places Little r, that should be little r. Uh, should have a little r there, a little r there, and that should be little r. Because again, r is not big r is not necessarily equal to little r. So uh, basically, that's your final result, your corrected result. <clears throat> And of course, uh, there, there's more than one way to write this, and you can kind of, uh, if you worked it differently, you might get the uh, get ir minus e and the negative of that, um, or you might have gotten a um, different order of multiplication. It's all really the same, basically. Okay, example. Pause. All right, here we are back. If I didn't switch stuff around by accident, oh. Slideshow, current slide, okay. <clears throat> okay, so this uh, exercise four, this one's about proportion, basically. And they say at the heading, solving a proportion, so you already know how you're going to go about solving it, um, or how they recommend that you go about solving it. Um, Yeah, it's basically the same as when you're doing a, a similes and grammar, basically. You know, you're basically, uh, but I'll go ahead and write the problem, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, there's... In 2008, about 15 of every 100 Americans had no health insurance. 15 of every, yeah. And the red, white, and blue is only, it's only coincidental, not on purpose <laughs> for this question. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. So we have uh, every 100 Americans had no health insurance. Um, the population at the time was about 302 million.
<clears throat> How many millions of Americans had no health insurance? All right, so let's, uh, I'm going to change the color quickly. Pointer options, ink color, red, blue. So basically, let's pull out the information they're giving us. The year is not important. Here's uh, saying 15 out of every 100, okay, had no health insurance. The population was 302 million. So the population was 302 million. Right. And so what, what do these numbers actually mean? Because, uh, every 100, 100 Americans, um, we're talking about the American population, and so that's people. So basically what we have is 15... out of 100 uh, relates to what? Uh, so we'll see here, we got, uh, well, before I even go writing it in, in, in a ratio, let me step back for a moment. Uh, backtrack for just a little bit. Backpedal. Let's see here. Screen. All right. So I'm going to write rewrite this. So 15 out of every 100 Americans. Okay. 15 out of 100 Americans. No in, no insurance. And 320 million people. So, of course, if the population of America, so that's going to be 302 million Americans. All right. So, basically, so now that we have this, we can kind of see how uh, th this is going to be set up, basically. So, 15 out of 100. So basically, in this case, uh, we're saying this ratio, if we reduced some ratio, we'd get 15 out of 100 equals some equals something out of, so basically, this is the whole and this is the portion. And this is the total population, so this is again a whole and we don't really know the portion, so we'll just call the portion X. So basically we got hole in the bottom and portion in the top, so we're gonna put hole in the bottom here. And um the portion in the top. And we could have set it up the other way. We could have put the hole in the top and the portion in the bottom as long as we were consistent. It doesn't really matter uh, as long as we're consistent with uh, what we're doing. Uh, so now yeah, we can reduce this fraction actually and that'll become, uh, let's see here, we got 15, uh, let's see here, and there's a little sidebar over here. So we got 3 times 5 over 20 times 5, 3 over 20. Alright, so that's going to be uh, 3 over 20 equals uh, x over 
302 million and I'm keeping that million there because that's a number that's part of the number this actually means uh, 10 to the 6 okay wait 10 to uh, Yeah, three six. I had to think about it for a moment. Yeah, but that's basically ten to. Ten. So this mill actually has a meaning. So this is a number. This million is a number. Now this is not a standard way of writing million. I mean that's just me shorthanding it. But basically it's three hundred two million. So uh, we basically have uh, if I multiply both sides by three hundred two and multiply by uh, twenty, I'm going to end up with. Uh, Three times three o two million uh, equals twenty times x. So that's going to be uh, six hundred two million equals twenty x. So that means that x equals. So it's going to be twenty. 602 let's see here 602 over no 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 that is 606 sorry yeah so that's going to be uh, what am I saying <laughs> I'm changing stuff unnecessarily. Okay, I'm a little too tired. All right, let's see here. Uh, that was completely right. I don't know why I changed that. That's not even arithmetic. That's just nothing being done. Okay, so that was uh, what needed to be changed. I changed that in the wrong place is what I did. Um, so let me change it in the right place. Because uh, that is not the right value. That's going to be 906, I believe. Let me, yeah, so that should be 906. Let me grab my calculator. Double check. I'm pretty sure that's 906. That's dead. Whatever. 906 is what it is. I'm confident. Alright, so do we have a uh, uh, pointer options. So it's going to be 906 million. Oops. Ugh. Writing in the wrong place. Pointer options. Eraser. Okay, I don't want that. It's all. Okay. So basically, I got 906 million divided by 20. So that's going to be. Uh, Yeah, so forty five point three million X All right, so that's how many people uh, did not have health insurance in 2008, according to this uh, statistic. <clears throat> a lot of people. A lot of people.
Okay, and another example. Let's see here. And this one involves rates. So we have Jody Fries. Oh, excuse me, she's not frying something. Her last name is Fry. <laughs> Jody Fry's car uses 10 gallons of gasoline. Uh, to travel 210 miles. She has five gallons of gasoline in her car. And she uh, wants to know how much more uh, gasoline she will need to drive 640 miles. If we assume our car continues to use gasoline at the same rate, How many more gallons will she need? Save this so I don't lose it. I believe it should be saving. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So basically, we let's look at let's like before. Let's look at what they're actually giving us. Okay, so uh, choose a different color. Color. Okay, we'll go with purple. All right, so uh, the car uses 10 gallons of gas. To travel 20. 210 miles. So basically, she uses 10 gallons to travel 210 miles. All right. Let's see here. She has five gallons in the car already. Okay, so we took care of that. She got gas already in the car. She wants to know how much more she needs. 
So basically the uh, total amount So that's going to be this five gallons plus whatever else she needs. So it's going to be five plus however much more she needs to get where she's going. The distance she's traveling is 640 miles. So this needs to get her 640, 640 miles. So basically she gets 10 gallons on 210 miles. And she has five gallons. She wants to try for 640 miles. So she, she she basically wants to know how much gas it takes to drive 640 miles, given she already has five miles, five gallons taken care of. So it's just going to be ba basically five plus whatever X is. Another way you could do this is to find uh, some, set this whole thing and say it's Y and then subtract out five to the X. So there's more than one way to do that. So, uh, but basically what we end up having is 10 gallons over 210 miles equals, um, and actually we could, we could have did this the normal way and said miles per gallon, but either way works. Um, so now we just need to be consistent, careful with our units. So on the top we have gallons. So this is 5 plus x gallons over 640 miles. So it goes away. Uh, this goes away. All right, because we already take care of gallons. So really, uh, all we need is... Uh, So x equals fuel amount in gallons, and actually, uh, I won't worry about the units for the time being. Uh, let me let me not even do that because that might be a little bit confusing. Uh, so I, I won't even concern myself with units. We'll just note uh, that. The numerators, the gallons, and the denominators are on, on both sides are miles. Okay, that's all we need to worry about really. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 640 and multiply both sides by 210 so we can get rid of all these fractions. So this side is going to be 6400 equals. Uh, let's see here, 210 times 5 plus x. So, uh, dividing both sides by 210. Uh, calculator. Right, so, if I divide both sides by 210, Okay, so I get about 304. So actually, before I do that, you see I get a dec decimal there. Let me, if I do that, I'm going to have bigger and bigger. If, if I get a decimal in the middle, that's going to cause me to keep compounding my error as I go. So I, you want to wait until the end and then do it and then get your decimal. So we'll leave everything as a fraction for the time being. So actually, let's just go ahead and write this uh, another way. So we'll write it this way. So we basically have 6,400. Uh, 5 plus x. All right, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by, uh, well, actually, let's go ahead and multiply this out. So 6,400 equals, 
uh, 210 times uh, 5, which is 210 times 5. 1050, okay. Plus 210 times x. So now we just have uh, minus 1050, minus 1050. So 6400 minus 1050. 5350. All right, so we have 5350 equals 210x. And now, Fifty three fifty divided by two ten. That's twenty five point four seven. And drop the ten. All right, so that's going to be twenty. So how many decimal places they tell you? I don't really tell you a number of decimal places, so we'll just take it to, I guess four is fine. They don't really specify the number of decimal places, so I'll just take it to four. So we basically have uh, x, so we basically end up with x equals, and we can bring that calculator back up. Uh, Windows 8 is a little annoying. Alright, so let's see, 25.4762. 25.4762. Now what was our units on X? Let's see. X was in the top, so it was gallons. Uh, so that's the amount additional fuel that she'll need. Yeah, or I guess they call it gas drunk. <laughs> yeah, additional fuel or additional gas or whatever you want to call it. Gasoline, fuel, whatever. Alright, so um which they rounded. I think the book rounded to twenty five point five, which that's that's fine. I I would definitely specify um uh, what the uh how many decimal places around to, but it's not really a big deal, even in engineering, it's not that much of a big deal to be off by that much, such a small amount. Um, let's see here. All right, so now, uh, example six. All right.
Eh, it seems backwards and extremely backward, but this is very similar to that problem on the exam the other day um, with the plane. Uh, basically, a paddle on a wheeler goes 10 miles against the current in a river, and in, in the same amount of time it takes it to go, well, in the same time that it goes 15 miles with the current. Uh, it says if the rate of the current is 3 miles per hour, Find the rate of the boat in steel water. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> no, excuse me. Now, this was a little bit tricky at first glance. Um, but as with before, let's look at the information we're given. Uh, okay, so color back to red. And if you're interesting, a, interested, a paddler is basically just like a, a boat that has a paddle on the back of it instead of a um, fan or I guess a turbine type deal. Uh, but basically, uh, <laughs> I guess boats don't usually have turbines, but at any rate, um, <clears throat> uh, so basically it goes 10 miles against the current in a river. So let's see here. Okay, so we got against current, and we got with current. <clears throat> Let's keep these two separated. So we got 10 miles against current in a river. At the same time, it takes to go 15 miles. So it's going 15 miles uh, with current. Okay, and also the time. We don't know the time, but we know the time is the same for each case. So they tell us that the rate of the current is 3 miles per hour. Three miles per hour. Slide. Okay. <sighs> Sorry about it. All right, so it's a, against current. We're going 10 miles against current, uh, 15 miles with the uh, current. So those are our distances. So this is uh, basically we can call this. Uh, so basically, um, buh, buh, buh. so we'll call that D1. Call this D2. All right. And a current rate is three miles per hour. So um, R1, and we'll call the uh, <clears throat> so the rate with the current. So basically, if this is the rate at, we'll call the rate at standstill R. Okay. So if there's no current, basically it's just R. Okay. So basically. The current here is going to slow the rate down by uh, three. Okay, so if I'm going against current, this is going to slow this down by three miles per hour. Okay, now I'm going to take that same rate 
and add three to it if I'm going with the current. So basically, if there's no current, then I should just be traveling at a rate at the uh, rate of the boat. So this is the actual boat's rate without current. Alright, so R is the rate of the boat without current. So basically that rate is going to be decreased by 3 if I'm going against the current of 3 miles per hour. And it's going to be increased by 3 if I'm going with the current of 3 miles per hour. So <clears throat> those are my two cases. So basically I have a rate. So we can call this R1. And we'll call this R2. Okay. So basically... <clears throat> So we have basically, uh, so we know that uh, R equals distance over time, right? So R is this rate is distance over time. So basically we have a distance, we have time, and so on. And in this case, times are the same. So basically we have R1 equals D1 over T and R2 equals d2 over that same time. So basically you have time equals d1 over r1 and time equals d2 over r2. Okay. So by the transitive property that means that uh, d1 over r1 equals uh, d2 over R2. Okay, so <coughs> basically, let's see what information we actually have now. So we know D1. D1 is 10 miles. D2 equals 15 miles. R1 equals R plus <clears throat> excuse me, R minus 3. Uh, R minus 1. And R2 equals R plus 2. Yep. Oh, goodness. Right, I'm out of time on here. Pin. Uh, I don't want pin. Eraser. I hope I'm not running out of time on this little recording. Uh, pin. <laughs> All right, so let me check my timer. Keep. I got about. Okay, I got about three and a half minutes, so I gotta serve time a little. All right. All right. So if I go back, I can see that D1 over R1 equals D2 over R2, which means that 10 miles, 10 miles over R minus one equals uh, 15 over r plus 1 okay which basically now we're back where we started before 10 times r plus 1 equals 15 times r minus 1 which means that 10 r plus 10 equals 15 r minus 15 so we have plus 15 plus 15 so it's going to be yep. oh no 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 I don't want that okay this is annoying 10r plus 10 equals r alright 
And I'll just start here. Make room. <clears throat> Squeeze this in for the video ends. Uh, one hour limit. 10 R plus 25 equals 15 R. Okay, so we got uh, minus 10 R minus 10 R. This means that 25 equals. 5R, so R equals uh, 5 okay. so R equals 5 and that's going to be uh, basically a miles per hour Does miles per hour, either way, whatever way you want to write it. So let's look at what we're actually asked. What are we asked to find? Uh, they ask us to find the rate of the boat in still water. Okay, so that's what we're actually looking for. Uh, max and error. Let me see. Let's see here. 10R, 15, it's 25. 15 and 25. So it's 15 divided by 5. It's 5. Okay, it's there somewhere here. 10, 10, 15, 15, R plus 1, R. So that's R plus 1, that's minus 1, plus 15, R. Ah, I'm running out of time before I can ask, but I can't try to hurry up. I'm gonna have to pick this up in the next video. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to pick this up in the next video, so I'm gonna have to run over. All right.